so a uh, bit of a shift of gear. Um, we're going to look at um, the teaching of copyright uh, across higher mu music education. Uh, I'm Matthew Flynn. I'm a lecturer at the University of Liverpool, uh, and I'm going to be co-presenting uh, with Rachel Drury. Um, thanks for having us. It's great to be back. I really enjoyed the conference last year. Uh, I'm looking forward to presenting today. I've really enjoyed what I've heard this morning uh, so far. Um, this is a presentation of uh, a a book chapter for an edited collection called New Takes on Recorded Music, which is edited by Daniel Borowski and Giorgio Volioti. Uh, and so we're just going to sort of summarise some of the things we uh, have found uh, in preparing this chapter for publication. Um, uh, you, for all of us involved in music education, uh, you will have, uh, have to have been under a rock uh, for the last sort of three or four years, I think, to have not noticed the... Uh, you know, report of uh, catalogues of the sort of behemoth artists of the late 1960s and 1970s, uh, exchanging hands for, you know, multiple millions of dollars. Um, the most recent one being Pink Floyd, but we've obviously had the likes of Bob Dylan and Neil Young and Stevie Nicks and a whole host of people. It seems every week someone selling the catalogue to either a music company or, or a sort of emerging um, sort of rights-based company like Hypnosis or something like that. Um, and this just demonstrates actually obviously underpinning all of these deals is the notion of copyright. Uh, and so Roger's sort of quote here talks about, you know, um, the copyright being at the nexus of, of the artist. Um, and this certainly got me interested in thinking about how effectively we prepare uh, our students um, for the reality of, of, you know, what is ultimately, from my point of view, the thing that makes music industrial, which is, which is copyright. Um, and so this sort of led me on a bit of a journey of sort of uh, exploration and initially uh, with my own students, but then more broadly into this chapter. Um, so that started by looking at the sort of history of high music education. So there's research by Clunan um, from in, on UK music institutions in the early 2000s when there was about 20. Um, I think Celia was talking uh, before, or Liz maybe mentioned that it was the only sort of, when she studied, it was the only popular music course available. And so, yeah, we'll show in a minute how um, music is growing uh, exponentially as an academic subject. Um, since Clunan sort of first talked about you know, the best ambitions for music courses is to connect people with their local sort of music scenes uh, and maybe develop transferable skills. And obviously in that time, since the sort of early 2000s, we've had the emergence of digitalization and digitization, uh, which is sort of realized in this idea now of the creative economy and what Mark Mulliman calls artist direct, whether it's direct to fan or DIY, there's all sorts of different uh, titles for basically self-managed entrepreneurial uh, artists and musicians um, engaging economically uh, through uh, digital platforms uh, and live performances uh, in the market. And again, underpinning all these types of things is the no activities is the notion of copyright. Uh, so we did a um, using Guardian, uh, the Guardian uh, newspaper data and UK Music, which is the trade body that represents um, the sort of uh, attitudes of the music industry to uh, UK government. Uh, they have a list of, of courses and institutions that um, deliver HE music courses and, and sound technology courses. Um, and so we we did a sort of summary of these courses. We didn't include Scotland uh, because of the second phase of the research, which Rachel will explain, which was a survey because the educational system in Scotland is, is different to the rest of the UK. Um, so there's 106 institutions across the UK uh, that deliver sort of uh, music music based courses. Um, there's 411 undergraduate courses in total and 301 postgraduate courses uh, with the vast majority of them being um, going back to uh, Liz's and Christina's um, presentation, where uh, as the land of opportunity, most of the vast majority are focused around London and the southeast. That almost fifty percent, if you take London, southeast, and southwest, although it's prominent uh, delivery in the northwest of England, uh, Liverpool and Manchester, and Yorkshire. You know, courses in, in Leeds and Sheffield, in particular, uh, and certainly, um, you know, again linking to Liz's and Celia's presentation. Um, this generally the tone is uh, that 
entrepreneurship, entrepreneurialism, uh, the preparing students for professional development seems to be quite an embedded p uh, part of most of these courses now. Um, previous research suggests that, you know, embedded across most um, music curriculums is some aspect of preparing, preparing students professionally. But one of the areas that um, still seems to confound the students I teach uh, is this notion of copyright and how to get them to engage with with sort of understanding copyright and this idea of a bundle of rights that Frisch and, Frisch and Marshall proposed in the early 2000s and you know and then obviously the diagram from Peter Schmuck here um, in his book The Economics of Music um, even this relatively simple and straightforward diagram shows you the complexities of having to try and get uh, uninitiated creators as Barr refers to uh, in his uh, PhD research on on copyright music uh, to understand the importance uh, and the consequences of making copyright rated decisions earlier on in careers and not understanding the sort of the long term timelines um, of obviously 70 years after the death of the most uh, of the last author from a song point of view, um, the ramifications of those decisions. And so we wanted to explore this in a bit more detail about what was taught and then also the experiences of the um, music students of how it was taught. I'm going to hand over to Rachel to talk about that. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Um, so, yeah, the first part of our research involves collecting data on the presence of copyright education in the higher education music system. Um, and as Matt mentioned, we identified 106 institutions across England, Wales and Northern Ireland that between them offered a total of 712 courses on music and sound. Um, and by examining the module content of each of those courses, we were able to identify a number of modules that offered some form of tuition on copyright. Um, some of these modules included aspects, aspects of copyright within wider professional development modules, and some were exclusively about copyright. Um, and very often they were optional modules with only a few um, considered mandatory. As you can see from the table displayed, uh, the vast majority of the courses that contained modules on copyright are delivered in London and the South East, which correlates with the larger number of courses in sound, music and sound offered in those areas. Um, so this suggests that the geograph ge geographical proximity of these institutions to the UK's bigger music companies may underpin the demand for music HE and for knowledge of copyright in that area. Um, but overall, as you can see in the last column, um, the last column demonstrates that across all courses on music and sound delivered um, across the country, copyright doesn't feature very prominently at all. Um, copyright is generally not an embedded part of curricula. Um, however, our research did, did show um, that copyright did feature more prominently in courses delivered at specialist popular music institutions like the BIM Institute and uh, Liverpool Institute for Performing Arts, where courses are more vocational, whereas between the country's eight music conservatoires, only Leeds Conservatoire offers a module on copyright at undergraduate level on their uh, music business course, their undergraduate music business course. Um, and universities uh, find themselves somewhere in between the two. Um, so once we looked at the distribution of provision within courses across England, Wales and Northern Ireland, the second part of our research involved the distribution of a self-selecting online survey to music students via um, an identified course leader at each of the 106 higher education institutions. We didn't receive as many responses as we would have liked, um, perhaps possibly because of the, the topic of the survey, um, but um, I think data collection was possibly limited also by the timing of distribution towards the end of semester one coinciding with end of semester module evaluation surveys and the distribution of the national student survey. Um, however, we received 70 responses, which was acceptable, but means that findings are more indicative than comprehensive. So the purpose of the survey was to examine students theoretical and practical knowledge and awareness of copyright and their confidence in managing those rights. The survey asked students about their music making activities, both within their course and external to their course, um, along with a whole uh, selection of questions around their awareness of copyright and their engagement with copyright. Um, and it became evident from the responses that HE institutions are now doing an awful lot more in terms of encouraging students to practice music making and recording. Um, and a lot of students are already active within the artist's direct market. Um, using uh, platforms such as SoundCloud and Bandcamp to share their music and 
uh, by releasing music on Spotify. Um, the many students are already producing musical works, songs, master recordings, and other related works such as artwork um, in which copyright subsists. However, there were three um, key findings regarding students' experiences with copyright we'd like to highlight today. Um, in general, there was a lack of awareness of copyright, um, a low engagement of where to uh, source credible information on copyright, and a, a low engagement with industry organisations that deal with copyright. So we asked participants what kind of activities they engage with, which, um, which generate music related copyrights. And we then asked them about their understanding of copyright in relation to those activities. And this graph clearly demonstrates a disparity here, as the vast majority of participants are engaging with copyright related activities, and yet less than a quarter are aware of what music related copyrights they may own. Um, only a few students, undergraduates and postgraduates, were engaging with unions or societies where they would be able to access credible information about their copyright related activities. Confidence in the management of copyright was also extremely low. Uh, most participants were not signed up to uh, the UK's collection societies, PRS and PPL, and those that were um, found PRS and PPL difficult to use. Additionally, very few were aware of new platforms and technologies on the market that provide rights management tools such as Session and Viva Sound, which are now part of the, uh, the creator economy, where you can agree copyright splits, create metadata and pass that information down the supply chain um, of managers, labels, publishers, streaming services and so on. <clears throat> and the last important question we asked participants was about where they turn to for credible sources of information on copyright. Uh, the most frequently used source was YouTube, um, interestingly then followed by PRS, despite membership being extremely low among participants, and then other industry sources. Uh, we also asked about how participants were learning about copyright on their course, uh, the results of which can be seen on the, in the graph on the right. Um, and it became quite obvious that most students were actually picking up knowledge tacitly and practically from more experienced musicians when engaging in musical activities and not through the mainstream delivery within their programmes. Thanks, Matt. And just lastly, we sort of ask students to reflect on their formal teaching of, of, of copyright um, within programmes. And as you can see again from the, the graph, about either almost a third had no tuition whatsoever. Um, and we, we assume that the no answer, 10% um, was sort of similar. The vast majority um, only had the basics covered. Um, maybe one, uh, you know, 10%, around 10% had a comprehensive module. Um, but relating to this idea that students tend to learn through practical sort of application and tacit knowledge, um, only 10% were sort of practically applying copyright as part of their courses. And this led us to a couple of recommendations and conclusions in the chapter. Um, it's clear that um, HG Music providers have really adapted over the last 20 years in the UK to meet the demand, the changing demands of, of students, particularly with embedding um, things like entrepreneurship um, into programmes, as um, Celia and Liz demonstrated before. Um, but they may need to evolve again to be more comprehensive in the way that they deliver uh, copyright um, and build students' awareness and engagement with it as a concept, but also practically. Um, we would sort of suggest normalizing the topic. Um, so it's more embedded in, in things like music history, um, um, maybe having to register or mock register the rights of in sort of songwriting modules and those types of things would just sort of close the loop on, on what is a fundamentally creative process, but the administrative aspect of it. Um, and also, but fundamentally, we would encourage a much more practical approach to the delivery of copyright. So maybe it's not so like a bespoke module or a dedicated module, but just more embedded across the curriculum. We appreciate that this is difficult to, to embed quickly and change, particularly at universities, big universities where programs are difficult to change relatively rapidly. Uh, and so we would sort of maybe uh, one of the things that we're trialing currently is a copyright clinic, which is a, a, a fortnightly drop in session where music musicians can just um, students can just drop in uh, and talk about um, issues related to their practical application of copyright as they progress through the course and engage in other activities outside of the course.